Hey, welcome to our YouTube channel, and if you haven't subscribed, please do. There's probably not a woman out there that hasn't experienced this at some time in her life, another woman being catty, competitive, or gossiping about us for no reason. Or maybe we ourselves are the ones acting badly. Well, today we're going to find ways around the spoilers that can turf our relationships with others. Danielle McCauley, yes, thanks for joining are. me. Hi there. Thanks for having me. Okay, so you've written this book, Why Can't We All Just Get Along? And it, it is about all these dynamics. And we see this a lot in pop culture in particular. Yes. Why do they portray women in this way? I feel like we are trained as women to compete and compare. I go to the grocery store and I look at the Us Weekly and on the front page there's who wore it best. You know, we are trained, uh, American Idol, um, all these different things, the best of the best are stacked up against each other. So naturally, we are, our, our natural tendency is we're going to want to do it too, um, but it's so destructive. And I think yeah. it's not just women. I mean, you know, we, we talk about women in particular being catty or gossiping, but I think um, the root of it's all insecurity and women Absolutely. aren't the only ones who struggle with that issue. Absolutely. It's funny, since I released this book, I've had um, interviews with men, um, you know, on the radio, things like that, and they say, Danielle, it's not just the women. But for me, this is my story, and I know that um, the enemy wants to come and steal, kill, and destroy women's relationships because he knows we're a powerful force. Mm -hmm. And um, so, yeah, I wanted to tackle this topic head on. Mm -hmm. Well, you as you say, this started in your own story. Yes. Tell me a little bit about how your relationships with women were used to be. Yeah, sure. So when I was the ripe age of 20 years old, I was whisked away, got married, and moved to one of the most affluent towns in America, really the world. Um, it was a bedroom community for New York City, so there were celebrities, there were uh, Wall Streeters, sports stars, and I found myself surrounded by a group of women, including friends, who I thought were more beautiful, cultured, talented, um, trendy than I was, and I just sunk under the weight of this. And I found myself um, responding negatively, a, a woe is me attitude, um, constantly looking and comparing myself to other women around me, um, thinking, you know, God, why have you blessed them with this and, and not me? And mm -hmm. becoming resentful, really. And um, there was one woman in particular who I just really um, just grew to hate. And I hated myself for feeling that way. I'm a good Christian girl. And um, I became resentful, insecure, jealous, and envious of her. And, um, and what happened was I was pastoring at the time and I knew my own junk, but I was also privy to so many women coming up to me and sharing their struggles and their inner things that they were dealing with. And I realized there's something going on here under the surface that is undealt with. Yeah, we don't have our claws out necessarily, but it's the heart stuff. It's the stuff going on under the surface that I, I liken it to a cold war. There's kind of things going on that, um, you know, we're ready to blow and we're not dealing with it. And so one day I was just in fury and frustration, scrubbing my dishes and asking the Lord, why can't we all just get along? What's the deal? And, you know, he said, Danielle, you can. And I've already laid it out in my word. Um, I've given you the tools to truly be able to um, view yourself properly and then view other women properly as well. And that's kind of how this book came about. You know, I think about, as you said, in this in this community that you were living in, all these different people to compare yourself to. I think that's now social media because you don't have Absolutely. to live in that bedroom community to be able to compare yourself to all kinds of other people yep. who seem to have it all, way more together mm -hmm. than you do. So how did you take that journey from that insecurity kind of ruling you even though you didn't want it to? I think a lot of us wouldn't want to have those feelings, but sometimes you can't help it. Yep to mm -hmm. today being much more confident? Yeah, so there's two major things. Gratitude, number one. Um, I don't know if you remember that old song, count your blessings, name them one by one. Well, I was counting other women's blessings. It, it didn't say count her blessings. The song says count your own. So I began to f um, take my focus off of other women and what they had and what God had given them and start to look at what the Lord had blessed me with. And that was number one, and that changes everything. And then number two, um, I learned to turn my envy into inspiration. Rather than looking at the women around me and feeling inferior and woe is me and going, how come I'm not like her or her? I would go, wow, 
look at, she's killing it right now. What can I learn from her to become the best me that I can be um, rather than wishing I was somebody else? And so that was a huge thing. And, and then of course, just um, taking God's word and, and building myself up. Um, if I can quickly share one story that really hit me as far as comparison goes was there's a story in the Bible for those that don't know about the Israelites coming um, up out of slavery and ready to hit the promised land, this great place place that God was bringing them to. And um, I remember studying this and noticing that right, even though God was saying, yes, you're going to get there, you're going to conquer this, um, the inhabitants, even though when they, when they got to that point, what they noticed was, oh, there's a bunch of giants we have to take over. Mm -hmm. And their response was, next to them, we feel like grasshoppers. And I noticed right away, I said, they're comparing themselves. They're letting comparison conquer them before any giant could. And I said, Danielle, you've done the same. You've let comparing yourself to other women conquer you, even though God has so much more for you individually. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, the next thing I noticed was there were two men who actually, despite the giants, they said, no, we can go take the land. And what I noticed about them was if you rewind a few chapters back, they spent copious amounts of time in the presence of God. And I said, okay, Danielle, if that is where they were built up and learned who God was and what, who, who he'd made them to be, that's how I need to get from point A to point B. And so that's what I did. Yeah. So good. And one of my favorite sayings is that comparison is the thief, thief of, of joy. joy. Yes. Oh, do I ever love that. And I, mm -hmm. and I agree. There's always going to be somebody who is smarter than you, prettier than you, wealthier than you, whatever, right? And mm -hmm. also the other way, somebody who's, who's less, you know, or seems anyway, yeah. right? Uh, as we're comparing. Yes. So how do we, you know, when, when these emotions are completely overtaking us, somebody's mm -hmm. watching this right now going like, I'm jealous of somebody and I hate, I hate this about myself and mm -hmm. I don't want to go there, yeah. but it just overtakes me and I can't seem to get out of my heart. Yeah. What would you say some steps they could take even today to start dealing with that and maybe getting more freedom? Yeah, so what I did was I called a friend, I called a mentor, a woman I trusted, and that was the first step for me to, to confide in somebody and say, these are my deep, dark, ugly feelings and things that I'm grappling with. Will you help me? And she actually, um, it's funny, funny enough, she was a friend of the woman that I was struggling with and she um, knew enough and had the grace enough to say, okay, I'm gonna walk you through this and I'm gonna pray you through this. And she also kept me accountable. So she had grace, but she kept me accountable. And I just dug into God's word. And um, it was, um, you know, there, we can train our minds. We can retrain our, our thought patterns and by using the word of God. He says that he will help us to renew our minds. So little by little, it didn't happen over time, but um, I resolved to think well and to pray. The, um, the Lord says pray for our enemies. So it, it wasn't immediate, but um, over time, um, you know, right feelings follow right actions. So yes. when we do the right thing, eventually those feelings will, will follow. And I can tell you, Cheryl, the woman I once hated in my heart and there was a wedge between us, um, I can now say I love her with all my heart. And she's actually my prayer partner for over a decade. Over a decade, she's been my mentor, um, the most influential woman spiritually that I have. And so I know that if God can change my heart by um, having me submit to his process, then he can, anybody who's, you know, dealing with, uh, I just can't get over this woman. I, I can't, um, you know, I'm holding on to unforgiveness, whatever the struggle is. Um, you know, we all deal with it, but we all can get over it for sure. And I hope nobody fast forwards to what you just said, because I know, and I've experienced this, praying for someone that I didn't like, mm -hmm. uh, or that nobody liked even, mm -hmm. uh, created an intimacy between me and that person, it's and powerful. they just loved me, and I yeah. started loving them, and yeah. it totally changed. And same thing for me, friends with that person, and everything completely transformed. Prayer is so incredibly powerful. Absolutely. There's one thing that you mentioned in this book that I think is so interesting, is that we might inadvertently be contributing to other people's feelings of jealousy, mm -hmm. comparison, competitiveness toward us. Yeah. And you think about social media today, you know, when you're always posting your perfect life or your best hair or your fabulous vacation, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes we have to look about, we have to look at why are we doing what we're doing? Yes. So talk to me about ways that we can stop 
making people jealous, yeah. even without realizing it. Yeah, so I um, very uh, candidly share a story about years ago when I didn't do that. I didn't serve another woman. Um, and it was years ago when I was working uh, retail with another girl and I was getting uh, married and showing off my ring. And, you know, um, she was also engaged and she kind of had a more subdued uh, personality and ring as well. And um, I didn't seem to care. People would ask me and I'd go, on and on and I didn't seem to care at that time that this woman probably was bothered by that and she wasn't my friend um, and what I looking back at that story I think now I wish I had have kept my rock in my pocket I wish I would have served her asked her put her on the pedestal and in the spotlight and served her that way um, and so now I tell women where I go look around be careful with your tongue when you're talking in a group of women if you know a woman struggles with her weight don't talk about the 5k race you just ran if she struggles as a mom um, encourage her so um, the Bible says we need to serve um, and also not cause another woman to stumble and that happens on social media a lot but it, need, it happens face to face too and we need to be careful it does there's so much wisdom in this book the book is why can't we all just get along Danielle Macaulay thank you so much for joining us today thank you for having me this is all the character stuff that we can work on probably for the rest of our lives. We're never going to get it perfect or right. Uh, I certainly don't. I know that you don't either. But we can have a goal set to try to be more like God, to try to do more, to bring peace in our relationships, peace in our lives. I hope that you're inspired today. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll be right back.